almost more than 100 have registered uh, doctor dr shiva this meeting is being recorded we are live hello everyone a very good evening to all of you myself dr jamuna heading clinical excellence and research team at cure health i welcome you all for today's webinar session on post ortho surgery care management our guest speakers for today are orthopedic surgeon dr shiva reddy and physiotherapist dr hima bindu firstly for those who all do not know about our company i would like to give a brief introduction at cure health our vision is to save lives super proactively we have developed cure book app with more than 1,500 care plans and diet plans and 30 different health categories. These plans will help you to monitor your vital symptoms and everyday lifestyle management activities and which are specific to your health conditions. We have Sheila feature in app, which will act as an AI-based healthcare assistant. She will record your vitals, symptoms, and also she will be able to give alerts whenever your values are exceeding the normal ranges. She will also be able to answer your questions related to your health condition. Under our Cure One Care Concert program, we have highly experienced and trained nurses who act as care coordinators. They'll be doing regular follow-up calls with the patients. They'll be monitoring their health condition. They'll be reminding them about their activities and day-to-day -day vital check, symptom check, they will also help the patients in adhering to the activities provided in the care plan as well as the diet plan. Our newly introduced product, Cure Home, has Bluetooth enabled devices, which are connected to CureBook app. This will automatically record your vitals whenever you use the device. Before we start the webinar, I would like to introduce you all to our guest speakers for today. Dr. Shiva Reddy is a renowned orthopedic surgeon with more than 15 years of experience. He has pursued his degree in Doctor of Medicine for, from Tbilisi State Medical University, Georgia. He dis, did his residential internship at Government General Hospital, Kurnul, and has worked as medical officer in NMDC, Bellari. He completed his residency in orthopedics from Rex Orthopedic Hospital, uh, Coimbatore. Dr. Shivaridi has also done his fellowship in sports medicine and arthroscopy in 2015. He served as team physician for Chennai Football Club Champions, which is an Indian Super League football franchise in the year 2015. He got training in shoulder arthroplasty and arthroscopic surgery under Peter Campbell, Perth, Australia in 2016. He is presently working as consultant and senior registrar in sports medicine and joint uh, preservation at Department of Orthopedic Surgery and Replacement at Glen Eagles Global Hospital in Health City, Chennai. He also runs his own clinic, the Ortho Clinic in Chennai. He has good number of articles published in his name and has attended various CMEs, workshops, and conferences. His main area of interest includes sports medicine, arthroscopy, joint replacement, and adult reconstruction. Dr. Shiva Reddy, we are honored to have you as our speaker for today. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And a... we have, yeah. Yeah, we have... Yes, yes. yeah, welcome, doctor. So we have our uh, expert physiotherapist, Dr. Himabindu, with us today. She has more than a decade of experience in her domain. She has completed her bachelor's in physiotherapy from Nizam's Institute of Medical Services. She did her MBA in healthcare services from Sikkim Manipal University and is a certified ergonomics uh, assessment specialist from the back school, Atlanta. Uh, and currently she is working as a senior physiotherapist at the Ortho Clinic, Chennai, along with Dr. Shiva Reddy. Previously, she worked as ergonomist and physiotherapist in different hospitals, namely Glen Eagles Global Health City, Chennai, in uh, Vijaya Hospital, Karnul, at uh, Karpaga Vinayaga Institute of Medical Sciences, Chengalpattu, at Vijaya Health Center, Hyderabad, and also at Fitness One, Hyderabad. Her main areas of special interest are ergonomics, women's health, antenatal and postnatal conditions, orthopedic conditions, and sports injuries. She has provided talks and presentations at various conferences and has attended many CMEs and workshops related to physiotherapy and rehabilitation. 
Dr. Hima Bindu, I welcome you for today's session and thanks for joining. Hey, thank you. I would like to inform all the viewers that you can type your questions in comment section and these questions will be answered at the end of the webinar during Q&A session conducted by Dr. Isha. So let's begin our webinar session on post ortho surgery care management. Uh, uh, among various types of ortho surgeries performed all over the world by orthopedic surgeons, replacement surgeries, especially knee, hip, shoulder replacements, and arthroscopy surgeries, trauma, and pediatric orthoscopy surgeries are very important. Thanks to technology that nowadays most of the ortho surgeries are minimally invasive. Dr. Shiva Reddy, he will be explaining us about these different kinds of surgeries and the significance of these surgeries. Over to you, doctor. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks for the introduction. And thanks to your book help for having me on the panel. So I'm Dr. Shiva Reddy. I work as a consultant orthopedic surgeon at Glenigal's Global Hospitals in Chennai and also at the the ortho clinic. So today we are going to discuss a very important topic, which most of the people will have a lot of doubts about. So it is post-orthopedic surgery care. So how do you take care of the orthopedic surgery, post-orthopedic surgery patients, both at home and when to take them to the expert's opinion, to the hospitals and how to take care of the wounds and also their rehabilitation. So let me start. So everybody, most of the things in orthopedics happens in a hurry. Generally then we have a trauma. So just like here you see the patient is being brought on a stretcher and immediately everyone wants to go out of the hospital as soon as possible. But very unfortunately in orthopedics, it doesn't happen like that. So there are a lot of people will come to see you. A lot of doctors will come in, a lot of nurses will attend to you. And sometimes you may need to have some surgery also. So orthopedics is a very complex thing where you have Diagnosis is being done and then you are taken to the operation theater and then the physiotherapy will take care of you in the rehabilitation and then, then only you'll be able to discharge and we'll be asking you to come regularly for checkups also. So let us see how you can take care of this orthopedic patients at home much more productively and see that they are, they are getting back to their health as soon as possible. So generally, orthopedic surgery, we have fracture surgery where the two bones are broken and then we have to go under the surgery so that we fix it with the plates or nails. So that is a fracture surgery. The replacement surgery, everybody knows that we have a knee replacement, we have hip replacements which are very commonly done and also the shoulder surgery, also shoulder replacements are also picking up even in India now. And also we have an ankle replacement also being done. There's something called... Just a second. You're able to see my, share, my screen, right? Yes, doctor. We are able to see your screen. Yeah, sure. So in orthopedic surgery, so we have fracture surgery, replacement surgery, and also arthroscopic surgery. These are the surgeries which are done with a small... We call it as keyhole surgeries. So most of the ligament reconstructions in the knee and shoulders are done with the help of an arthroscope. And of course, we have pediatric surgery and a deformity correction surgeries also. So just I want to give you the uh, bird's eye view, what is done in orthopedic surgery. So we have a fractures, we have replacements, we have a scopy, and also we have the pediatric surgery and deformity corrections. So here, in this slide, what you see is the fracture surgery. So just imagine, any hip which is broken. So the patient comes to the hospital, generally they are 60 plus or 70 plus with a trivial fall and they succumb to these fractures and they are having a lot of comorbid conditions. But here we had to operate him so that they are back to normal as soon as possible so that they'll be able to walk, they'll be independent, they'll be able to take care of their ADLs, that is activities of day, day living. Just below this, you can see this hand. I think you are, you are able to see my cursor, I think. So in this picture, you see 
it is we call it as both bone forearm fracture so the forearm fractures are the fractures which are in the middle of the shaft of the bone so and these fractures are generally treated with the plates just like as you see over here so what are the difference between different part you no know, different fracture surgery is a bone can be broken very near to the joint where the joint moves or else the fracture can happen in between the two joints also just like in between the elbow and in between the wrist so fractures which are in the joint they are much more complicated these are to be reduced and anatomy should be restored so that we'll have a better function and also the degenerative changes doesn't happen as far as in the middle of the bone these are less complicated surgeries we can say crudely but not like that so we have a fractures in the joint and the fractures in between the joints so here you can see that this is into the joint so the totally the knee joint is shattered especially the tibia is broken into multiple pieces so the surgeon generally tries his level best to restore the anatomy the articular congruity we call it as so that everything is smooth and clean so that whenever the uh, joint starts moving it moves with a minimal amount of friction so this is regarding the fracture surgery so as far as a replacement is concerned actually it is not a replacement we don't replace anything actually it is a we can we can call it as total knee arthroplasty so that's why i have written it as a total knee arthroplasty what does it mean just you can see this in this images and on the left hand side the knee is worn out both on the femoral side both on the tibial side as well but here we are not taking off the whole joint we are taking only the part of the bone which is uh which is degenerated or which is arthritic we can say so that is replaced with a some prosthesis here it is an for the femur it is an uh, cobalt chrome and for the tibia it is an uh, poly which is mounted on a cobalt chrome stem the same is the case with the total hip arthroplasty also so these surgeries are not traumatic or they are not very acute and they, these are mostly the planned surgeries we call them as elective surgeries so we can plan for it you go and visit the hospital you'll have the regular x rays done the doctor will examine you all the necessary investigations are done and after that we take a decision whether to go for an arthroplasty that is a replacement or not and at the same time we very well know that these are the surgeries which are done at the age group of 50 plus and here in the 50 plus age group we have some comorbid conditions like hypertension maybe diabetes maybe some people will have some kidney diseases and some endocrine problems rheumatism all these problems so all these problems have to be optimized so the patient is optimized before for the before going for the surgery so these are the surgeries which we can plan to some extent so here the patient is optimized all his comorbid conditions are taken care of and then he is posted for the surgery but as far as the fracture surgery is concerned as you all know it is an emergency so the patient has some rta that is road traffic accidents or a trivial fall at home they break their bones and they are at the emergency and and then we need to operate them on a on a emergency basis but these arthroplasties are not like that. now coming to the knee arthroscopy so i'm just is arthroscopy here i'm showing the pictures of the knee arthroscopy so here what you can see is that so through small portals we call it as so we have two or three portals we have a camera going in and from the other two portals we have different instruments going in and all the ligamentous injuries the cartilage injuries can be addressed with the help of arthroscopy arthroscopy has got its own advantages and disadvantages also with the help of arthroscopy most of the ligament reconstructions can be done but whatever uh, whatever the surgeries which need an open arthrotomy like opening up for example knee replacement those cannot be done through the arthroscopy so some are amenable for minimally invasive techniques some and some some surgeries are not amenable for the minimally invasive surgeries so here you can see in the knee arthroscopy all these photographs so we have a camera going in and then here i have explained it briefly in this photograph like what is acl surgery and here are the 
like the sutured wounds. Also, we have as like stab incisions. We call them as keyhole surgery. And this is how the dressings. So they are very small surgeries to look at on the skin. Now, pediatric surgery. So just look at this example. So this child has a fracture femur. So first, we do treat them. We have to treat them sometimes. So we have our own indications for the treatment. In this case, we have used an tense nail. So which is called as titanium elastic nails. So with the help of these tense system, we have fixed this fracture. And fracture has eventually healed well. Even with this surgery done, we have given the child a POP cast, above knee POP cast. So in this scenario, so the much more post-operative care becomes much more important. First thing is the child. So they don't express the way we want to. So we need to understand them. And then here the POP care also I would like to highlight. The POP generally it is of two types. So one is a slab we call it as where POP is put only on the one side of the bone, not on the all circumferentially. Then the other one is we call it as cast. Cast is something which is put circumferentially in the, on the limbs. So when you put a circumferentially this POP, sometimes the POP might get tightened because of the swelling, because of the continuously the, the child has been playing around. So here the POP care becomes very, very, very important. So what is POP care? POP care is that we should always look at the fingers, that's the extremities. For example, in the hand, we have to see at the fingers. If at all it is in the legs, we should look at the toes. What, what do you look for? You look for the change in the color, capillary refilling, okay, any swelling, and, and irritability, irritability of the chair. Some amount of irritability is expected, but irritability beyond expectations should ring the alarm bell. So all the, and rise of temperature, undue swelling of the fingers, thigh, or hands, so any swelling, any change of color, any irritability out of proportion. So this should ring an alarm bell and uh, we should uh, consult an uh, orthopedic surgeon or nearby emergency care at the earliest. Or else nothing is available, then you can just uh, try to remove the POP. So these are the things. So whenever you have some pediatric surgery, these are the things which you should, ex you should have in your mind and you should ask the uh, primary caregiver all the questions what you have and should have a proper answer and you should be well uh, informed about what to do, when to do. So, so orthopedic care after the operation is not like in a single, uh, it's not like straightforward, I can say. So there are a lot of things are uh, involved. It's not only from the surgeon's point. There are a lot of people are involved which, which help the patients to overcome all these difficulties. So first is the transport. And we need to have some arrangements at home because it's a fracture surgery. For example, if you are in the lower limbs, that is in the legs, so it will be, be very difficult for him to walk. So there should be arrangements made, like how to climb the stairs, how to come down the stairs, how to go to the washroom and come back, and how, how is he going to sit? How is he going to put his hand or leg on the sofa, on the couch, on the bed? So all these things have to be thinked. And at the same time, sometimes we need to take care of the wound also, operated wound. Uh, so we should have education of that. So we should, we should be well informed. So as I said, like positioning of the extremities and also the medications. Medications like antibiotics for how many days we should be continuing and any blood thinners have been given. And also the rehabilitation and emergency care. So I'll be just touching all these few areas in much more detail. So as far as transport is concerned, the basic thing is that if at all it is in the lower limb injury, then the complications will start. Then you will start thinking, how should I take my mom or my brother or my sister home? And how is she going to climb the stairs? How is she going to sit in the car and all those things? So let me give you some, some few uh, tips and tricks. So here you can see this lady sitting in the back seat of the car. So this is the way you should sit, you should make her sit. So somebody should hold her leg see that she's on to the uh, back seat of the car. The other person should go around, open the other door and just hold her from the shoulders and pull her back onto the uh, like back seat so that the whole back seat is reserved for her. And then she can keep, she or he can keep the limb on the 
uh, back seat. The other limb, she can keep it in the bent position. So this is the best way to take. And if at all you happen to live in an apartment or in a place where you need to have you need to climb the stairs, here you can see this gentleman slowly is trying to climb by himself. This is the best way. The other way is that like you can just hold his leg and then he will slowly, step by step, he will come up. Same is the case to descend the stairs. So these are the few things which you should take care when you are transporting the patient. Or else, if at all you are a bit confused and you need any help, then the hospital authorities can arrange you for the ambulance where the patient can be transported to onto the bed at home with the help of a stretcher. And how to position the patient now, limbs after the replacement surgery or the, after the fracture surgery. See, after the hip replacement and knee replacement, the, generally the doctor advises us to keep the legs apart so that the legs should not come together towards the midline, you can say. Why is it so? Because like we, we might have opened something and then we have done some surgery and that is the best position where the, all the surgical wounds heal well and in a proper way. Okay, and there is no dislocation and there is no disturbance to the implants inside the, uh, at the operative side, you can say. So here, and most of the people after, when I say them, like, you should keep your legs up apart, and then they'll have the next question. Can I turn around and sleep? Turn around, yes, you can do. Maybe after like 15 days, maybe after suture removal. But how to do that? You should always turn onto the non operated side. Just like we have put a pillow while sleeping straight, the same pillow we have to continue and we should turn him onto the non operative side. That is the best thing to do. And one more thing uh, after knee replacement, keeping the knee in an extended position, that is, straightening the knee is very important. Here you can see in this picture, <coughs> sorry, here you can see that uh, this person is lying down, there's a dressing and the pillows are there at the leg level, not at the knee level, so that the knee will not become bent. So it should be in a, always in a straight position. And here you can see, when you are keeping your leg elevated, your heels should be in the air. So why so I'll tell you. See, <coughs> here the heel should be like this. The heel should be always in the air. If at all they are not in the air, that part will take the most of the weight of the limb and we develop some ulcers also. So this is very important. So whenever you see these ulcers developing in the post-operative patients or debilitated patients or bedridden patients, these are the few things which you should be very attentive to. So immediately we should call the care caretaker or the orthopedicians or the hospital staff and then we should get some information from them. So coming to the wound care. So first thing is that we should know what is the approximate size of the wound before you take somebody home. Okay, And we should know what are the suture material. Generally, they'll explain to you, but even then you should have some information with you also. What is the suture material which is used? And what is the dressing material which we are using it? And when are the sutures planned to be removed? And when should we come back again for the dressing? Or else is it okay that we take care of the dressing? And generally, you, you will ask when to take bath and when to visit the hospital once again also. So here on the right side of the slide, you can see that a lot of stitches, staples, uh, staples, steri strips, glue, and all those things. So these are the different uh, methods with which we close the wound. So just, you know, so we use different methods, maybe nylon, maybe maybe silk, we, uh, especially in the gastro surgery, they use the silk. So we use generally the nylon. The staplers are the new things now. And uh, steri strips, here there are no sutures. There are only the stickers, you can say that, which stick on either side of the wound. And that we can remove it all. And then some people have started using the glues also. So, these are the four different kinds which we use. So mostly we'll be using the stitches and staples. In arthroscopic surgery, generally we use the steri strips also. So as far as the dressing material is concerned, some are waterproof, some are water repellent, and some are regular dressing which where we use the cotton 
gauze and pad, and then we have some bandages rolled around the extremities. As far as the waterproof ones are concerned, yes, they are really waterproof, but generally doctors will not advise you to take bath in them it's because we don't believe in the uh, the water quality and then the, how well are you taking care of the limb, especially after the implant surgery. Anybody will be doctors and also the attenders will be much worried about the infection. So generally we don't allow them to take bath, even though we have put them on a waterproof dressing. So waterproof dressings are look like this, water repellent look like this, and regular absorbent dressings are like this. As far as suture removal are concerned, so you should have a knowledge that generally orthopedic surgery wounds, we generally tend to take the sutures 10 to 15 days or is like 12th, 13th and 14th day, which is the appropriate time to take out. So generally we do the surgery on the fourth day we discharge. Again, after five days, we ask them to come back, to go back home. And then after five days, we can come back for the suture removal. If at all you are traveling somewhere and then you, are, you have to plan for yourself. So you need to know the suture material used because for the nylon, you can use the general scissors to remove them. For the staplers, you need a special instrument which is shown over here. So you should you can buy them uh, at the hospital where we have done the surgery, or else you have to take those uh, pin removal kit elsewhere prior for for the suture removal. As far as the medications are concerned, so if at all uh, we are having some replacement surgery, most of your hypertension, diabetes, and pulmonary issues will be will be uh, uh, will be taken care of and then the replacement surgery happens. But as far as the fracture surgery is concerned, it's an emergency surgery. So we optimize you all and then we take care of the fracture. So generally after the uh, fracture care, antibiotics has to be continued as we have advised. And after replacement, generally the surgeons advise the blood thinners also. And also sometimes after fracture surgery also. After replacements, generally we advise it for two months. So these are the few things which you should, <coughs> I'm sorry, which you should keep an eye on. So what are the medications I'm taking? And sometimes it is very good to have a detailed discussion with all your, <coughs> with all your surgical team and also the other doctors who are taking care of your hypertension, pulmonary issues, and rheumatology. <coughs> as far as rehabilitation is concerned, this is a very important from orthopedic point of view. Why? Because the surgery is important, but rehabilitation also is very important, especially after the replacement surgery and after the ligament reconstruction. I think Mrs. Sinabindu is going to highlight about all these things in the rehabilitation part. So here, in the rehabilitation, what we think and what is very important for us is the prevention, gaining the balance, gaining the coordination. These are the things which we focus on because prevention is very important, especially in the elderly patients to make some home arrangements so that they will not succumb to trivial falls, which may result in the fracture. So this is a like, uh, a summary of the rehabilitation. So rehabilitation revolves around the price phenomenon, that is the pain control, rest, eyes, compression, and elevation. So generally after the surgery, we have to isolate the part. Some muscles will be weak. We need to strengthen them. Once you strengthen them, you have to integrate that strengthened muscles into the body. So that we call it as integration of of the part into the body. And once that part is integrated into the body, and then we have to reinforce, now we have to re-educate them. So get the balance, get the proprioception, get the coordination, and all those things. So once you, you have done that, then your job is done. This is very important. So the follow-up, when should I come to the hospital? When, I, when should I come for the suture removal and application of the braces? Sometimes the braces are changed for the second time, third time and regular x-rays are needed and also physiotherapy consultation sometimes you might be having physiotherapy with, with uh, other people 
at your home and then when you come to the hospital you might be having with the regular physiotherapy who are working in the hospital so you should be able to communicate with them you should bring all the consultation papers of your physiotherapy of your primary care physicians to the hospital when you are coming and seeing an orthopedic surgeon fracture union and also the implant removal here i would like to stress all the most of the pediatric patients who undergo the plating or uh, some pins have been put into them for the fracture union generally we tend to remove them after one one and a half year so we have our own time period so we should think about that and uh, we can plan and we can go ahead with the implant removal so these things also we should have an uh, information about well that's it thank you all and any questions please thank you so much doctor you explained so well in detail that uh, i don't think anybody would have questions uh, in whatever you have explained already so the our audience would have clearly understood uh, like uh, after the surgery how the patient needs to be transported how the care has to be taken at home uh, the wound care especially the sutures and then you also mentioned about the patients with comorbid conditions why their medications are important so and and also about the rehab so now um, moving to uh, dr himabindu who is uh, a physiotherapist with us and she is an uh, expert in rehab care so i would like to uh, request uh, you doctor so please explain our audience like uh, post uh, these ortho surgeries uh, why uh, physiotherapy plays a very crucial role and how long does a patient needs to undergo this uh, physiotherapy care and uh, do they have to attend uh, uh, physiotherapy sessions at the clinic or hospital or uh, do the physiotherapist visit home and give sessions so please explain our viewers regarding this hello hi everyone uh, thank you so much for your help and thank you jamuna uh my doctor has explained the elaborately about the orthopedic surgeries everything uh, wound management transportation after going home what are the precautions they have to take care even rehabilitation he just uh, uh, explained in brief why physical rehabilitation is important and now come um, as me being a physiotherapist i am just explaining you in detail why physiotherapy is very much important after the surgery uh most uh, most of all the surgeries whatever may be the surgery orthopedic surgery or non orthopedic surgery whatever may be the surgery these days physiotherapy is a must and in ortho it is def double must <laughs> okay uh, whatever may be the surgery as doctor explained there are so many types different types of orthopedic surgeries orthoplasty orthoscopic surgeries or fracture fixation surgeries pediatric surgeries whatever may be the surgery there are few common problems faced by the patients after the surgeries like uh, pain and swelling the first complaint uh, which they will have and reduced mobility any orthopedic surgery especially done in the lower limbs lower extremities their mobility will be affected strength of that particular area or of that particular limb will also be affected after the surgery and they'll have some problems with their posture if any spine surgery or anything like that is done balance and coordination will also become issue because uh, some time maybe for a quite a long time if the patient is not asked to well, put his leg down even balance and coordination will also become an issue so these are the most common and important uh, problems which the patient face after the surgery other than that there are some simple non that non very important the problems also like um the reduced lung function because uh, the patient is on bed for a long time so lung function may also be affected and uh, sometimes they'll have blood clot commonly called blood clot or we call it as different thrombosis because that limb or that extremity has they haven't moved for a long time there are chances that they'll develop a different thrombosis also so to address all these issues physiotherapy becomes a must so one by one i'll explain you how physiotherapy is important to control the pain or to reduce the pain and swelling a uh, physiotherapist may um, do a little massage if needed or we will uh, use some treatments using the equipment um, like maybe heat treatment or uh, we give it and apply some ice packs if required some modalities also will use to reduce the pain and swelling 
uh, to reduce the swelling also, as doctor was explaining you how the limb should be placed. Uh, that also the physiotherapist can guide which way we can place the limb after the surgery so that the swelling will not develop or at least will not become more. And sometimes if needed, crepe bandage also physiotherapist can try or he can put on a stocking to reduce the swelling. That is the first point, definitely where physiotherapist is needed. And the second one is mobility. Most important thing, people will be scared of surgery uh, thinking of this, after surgery, will I be able to walk? Will I be able to go to my office? Will I be able to, if the surgery has been done in an upper limb, will I be able to ride? Will I be able to lift some weight? This will be the most important concern of the patient. So in this aspect, again, to regain the mobility of that particular limb, at the same time, on the whole mobility of the person, uh, if, the, if the limb, lower limb is affected, to make the patient walk, physiotherapy. Um, uh, uh, like, uh, how do we make the patient mobile from day one? Uh, it is not like physiotherapy will be started after you getting discharged from the hospital. From day one, after the surgery, physiotherapy role will start. In fact, pre the pre surgery also, if it is an elective surgery like doctor was explaining, or through plasty, the replacement surgeries are elective surgeries where the patient will go to hospital, talk to doctor, plan for it, and then get it done. So when he's going to the doctor, usually they'll have a physiotherapy review also, so that if there is something to be corrected before the surgery, or if we want to inform few concerns to the patient, we'll inform them prior so that they'll be prepared. If they are getting, going to get operated in the lower limbs, we will teach them uh, strengthening exercise for the upper limb also, for the upper extremities also, because for them to walk, they have to hold a walker. For that, hands should be strong. So like that. Um, so nowadays, there's like pre-operation also, physiotherapy is important. Post-surgery, we'll uh, implement all that. Uh, from day one, we will, as I said, um, how the patient is positioned in the bed, that will take care, and how to mobilize him slowly. Uh, in the bed itself, if the patient is not advised to put his leg down, in the bed itself, we will make him uh, free so that he can turn around, that will guide them. And after that, um, gradually, based on the protocol, based on the surgery which has, which has been done, if required, we will make the patient put his leg down with the help of walker, we'll make him stand. If required, slowly we'll, we'll train him, a gait training in the hospital itself. As doctor was explaining, the stair climbing, toilet training, all that we do in the hospital itself. Before the patient gets discharged, he'll be uh, aware of what he should be doing and what he should not be doing. So the mobility is also regained and the strength. Uh, once the injury, once some injury happens, if it is a fracture, if it is an injury, bone is uh, fractured, definitely tissues around that and muscles are also injured. So um, we are, uh, after the surgery, we are trying to regain the strength of that particular muscle or tissue also with some simple exercises. Initially, after the surgery, if the patient is not able to do strengthening exercise, first, the physiotherapist will do some exercise to maintain the flexibility. Gradually, we'll ask the patient to uh, initiate the activity. And after that, once he's comfortable with the full range of movement of that particular limb, then we'll be going to the strengthening exercise. If needed, we'll, we'll give some equipment and we'll ask him to do the strengthening exercise. This definitely uh, will take some time. All of a sudden, uh, from day one, we cannot uh, teach strengthening exercise. We have to check out the strength. How is the strength? Gradually, we have to go on it. And um, after that, uh, balance and control. Not every patient will have this issue, balance and control. If they are geriatric patients, definitely we will train them. If they were on the bed for a long time, definitely balance and control exercise are needed. And if some joint, especially you know, knee joint or ankle joint or anything, or the hip joint or involved, definitely balance is required. If something for a young patient, like a hand is broken in a young patient, for them balance and control will be fine. So everybody will not require balance and control exercises. And um, through doing all these things, some indirect uh, advantages or indirect good things are also we are doing like uh, blood flow is maintained. One we are doing the exercise, 
If the patient is lying down on the bed itself also, we are trying to maintain the blood flow throughout the leg. And we are seeing that he is doing some breathing exercises so that he will not have any complications in future related to the lung. So, and we will teach them some coughing techniques also because uh, if he is not able to cough out, that secretions will be there in the lungs and that may become a problem in future. So, this way physiotherapy is very important from day one till he becomes normal, till his all the daily activities are done by himself independently and individually. And who will actually uh, require this rehabilitation means everybody after an orthopedic surgery definitely requires a rehabilitation protocol. But the rehabilitation protocol, it depends on, on the type of surgery, on, on the surgeon, and the age of the patient, like that, so many factors are there. But surgery in such have, uh, it, it only doesn't affect the patient physically. It affects them mentally also. So physically and mentally uh, surgery affects and it influences the recovery, um, uh, recovery of the patient. Sometimes patients will get frustrated and they'll get anxiety, anxious also. So a physiotherapist uh, has to carry out a detailed assessment of that patient, uh, they have to sit with the doctor, sit with the surgeon, plan a particular protocol. Though uh, the replacement surgery, for example, we take total knee replacement surgery done for two patients at the same time, but two protocols may differ sometimes because if the patient, one patient is young, for them, maybe slight changes, and if the patient is old, geriatric patient, for them, the protocol may be. It is not like this will differ, but the time at which we, we do the exercise may differ. So for that, uh, everything should be individually assessed. We have to sit with the doctor. We should uh, talk to the doctor, what are his expectations, and then sit with the patients. But we should know what are their expectations after the surgery. What do they want to do? If, it, if he's a geriatric patient, he'll be happy. Like, okay, I go home, I do my activities, I'm happy. But if he is a sports person, he wants to go into the sports as soon as possible. So there it differs. So we have to sit with the surgeon and we have to plan a proper protocol and um, start doing from day one till he becomes normal and till his goals are achieved. So that is the importance of physiotherapy. And uh, when it comes to the time, uh, everybody will have these questions. How long I should do physiotherapy? Uh, it is like... Uh, unless until the patient is normal, the, the answer is like this. Unless until all the expectations of the surgeon, all the expectations of the patients are achieved, we have to continue the physiotherapy. So from day one, it starts until everything is achieved. Typically, if you want to uh, like know the protocols of any replacement or arthroscopy, it may differ from six months to three months to six months. In this range, it will be um, so physiotherapy from day one, as I told you, it's, it starts till in the hospital, we will guide the patient, like uh, how to be lying down in the bed, how to get out of the bed, how to go to the toilet, how to sit in the car, how to sit in the chair, everything we'll be teaching them. Once he gets discharged, once he goes home, what becomes important is regular follow-ups with the surgeon is very important. As doctor was explaining, here the patients will neglect. Sometimes they will neglect about the wound. There again, physiotherapist has to remind if, the, if they are coming for the regular follow-ups, at least the physiotherapist, if they are seeing regularly, at least physiotherapist can guide them that wound is not good, it is not healthy, you have to go check it out. That you, have, you can do. Regular follow-ups with the surgeon are must and regular visits to the physiotherapy if the physiotherapist is in the hospital that will be well and good or otherwise if he's seeing in the outside physiotherapist also regularly he should follow up whenever the physiotherapist asks to come better go to the hospital check get the progress checked then only we can have the proper recovery from the after the surgery otherwise what happens is usually patients they will come for a week after that, they'll just leave it for two months and after two months, they'll come back again because by then they might have developed the stiffness as they didn't do the proper exercise. They're not able to bend the leg or fold the knee. Then the surgery is of waste. If the patient is not able to fold the knee, he has to put his leg straight and sit. 
so his uh, so his uh, daily activities are disturbed so that is why physiotherapy is very important duration of the physiotherapy management as i told you again it depends on age of the patient general health condition of the patient and um, type of the surgery which surgery has been done few surgeries uh, as doctor was telling if it is just a simple rod or simple k wire fixation so that the recovery time will be faster compared to other uh, major surgeries and what are the demands of the patients so uh, generally i'll uh, i'll just explain in three steps how the physiotherapy management will go early phase the second phase first phase is early or the recovery phase second one strength and range of motion phase third one is the functional restoration phase first uh, as i told you um, it ranges uh, sometimes it ranges from just within one week or sometimes it is from one week to two weeks where the pain has to settle down uh, the swelling has to come down we will uh, initiate the range of movement exercise we will mobilize the patient will assess them uh, how to walk or will show them how to use the walker and all so that's the uh, early phase second one is the strength and range of motion phase where as i was telling you if the tissues are damaged if the muscles are weak if the limb uh, they are not able to bend it properly or make it straight properly in this phase we will be doing more vigorous of the physiotherapy like those strengthening exercises if the limb is very uh, stiff enough we will we'll teach them some stretching exercises balance and coordination also will come in this phase and in this phase mostly we are seeing that the patient then if he is walking with a walker also he is independent he doesn't require two persons to take him to the bathroom so like that in this phase and last one is the functional restoration phase where uh, like um, all of the strengthening activities are doubled uh, it is like this limb should become normally uh, like the other limb like the normal limb so that is the restoration phase to uh, up to that extent we have to continue the physiotherapy and uh, see that all the expectations of the patient are um, reached so every surgery is different every patient is different every patient's pain tolerance is different so better have regular follow ups with the surgeon and frequent visits to the physiotherapist so that you will not do something major mistakes uh, though the surgery is done if we are not reaching the patient's expectation the surgery is missed so for that not to happen Uh, they should have regular follow ups with the surgeon and physiotherapist so that we will prevent most of the complications like wound or joint stiffness or um, anything like um, uh, like any balance or any issues that we can control it there itself yeah thank you so much doctor for the detailed explanation i have one more question most of the patients nowadays for pain management post surgeries they try to procure these physiotherapy equipments like ift and ultrasonic equipments and all so doctor how safe are these like what do, what is your advice to such patients yeah even i have seen few patients ask me will buy this machine and keep it at home i say no <laughs> because it is not that easy that the machine looks very simple or the way we operate looks may look very simple but it is not like that if they want to control the pain as i told you they can they can get some nice hot water bags or ice bags or something uh, or some uh, simple vibrators these get uh, these days we get so many varieties in the brands in the market if they want they can buy like that but ift and ultrasound personally i don't advise anybody to buy because there is so much of technicality involved in it it is a current it is a current and there there uh, we the professionals we know which intensity we have to put which mode is good for uh, which patient and there are complications uh, associated with these machines if they use if there is a metal implant few machines are contraindicated patient may develop burn so it is not good i definitely don't advise anybody to buy ift or ultrasound for their home if they want you buy it and keep it let the physiotherapist and come and operate it home you yeah. please don't operate by yourself it is not safe 
Yeah. Yes, doctor. This this so uh, uh, this is a very good advice because most of the patients do it. I think now uh, they would understand why a physiotherapist is very important yeah. to handle these equipment. Very good. <laughs> yeah, and also, doctor, because you are an uh, ergonomist uh, special specialist. So I have a, a very important question, especially related to the uh, corporate employees. You know, right? Uh, in the uh, urban uh, cities, especially uh, the corporate companies, we know that uh, 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 employees sit for longer hours and they continuously yeah. work for more than eight hours, 12 hours sometimes. So because of which yeah. they develop a lot of back issues, then neck related issues. And uh, some yeah. have also uh, permanent damage in their discs, like L5-S1 disc yeah. degeneration. So um, yeah. what is your advice to uh, the employees uh, regarding the sitting yeah. postures or their uh, how their uh, working lifestyle should be? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody, even me, you, everybody these days, this generation, we all have this posture issues because uh, maybe 70 to 80 of the day other than our sleeping time we are always sitting whatever we do we are sitting we are uh, working we are sitting we are watching a movie or uh, watching tv we are sitting we are having dinner we are sitting so it's almost sitting so um, uh, we all know, now everybody know what is disc uh, there there is a soft cushion kind of thing called as disc in between the vertebral bones uh, normally, uh, when you stand, when you lie down, the pressure on the disc is less compared to sitting. In that sitting itself, if you are sitting like me, uh, like I, I am forward bending and sitting, or I'm just slouching and sitting, the pressure on the disc becomes three times more. So sitting itself is bad. If I'm not sitting properly, even now this is bad for me. So uh, everybody are advised to sit straight with the back support rest their arms on the armrest and then sit like this. Uh, when we do this, what happens is when we take the backrest, at least the muscles will relax. When you take the backrest, the muscles will relax and little pressure can be controlled, but still that is not good for a long time. So that is why I advise everybody, see that every one hour once you're getting out of the chair, walking for some time and then sit back. Uh, I know a few clients say, who uh, <laughs> patients say, I'm, I'm not able to get up because I have a call continuously for three hours I have to sit. Then at least do some simple stretches in the office chair itself. Uh, do some neck movements, do some shoulder movements, twist your back that side and this side, bend forward, come back, do some simple or move your foot uh, front and back. Move your knee front and back. See that there is proper blood circulation. Somehow you are relieving your back muscles. You can uh, you can just type in Google office stretches and get hundreds of uh, those stretches. At least five stretches in one hour you do it makes a very lot of difference. So please follow that and keep yourself hydrated. Um, everybody knows that we should have at least three liters of water a day, but nobody does. Make it a have it that at least two liters of water you finish it off when you are working so that we'll keep uh, ourselves hydrated and this if it is not hydrated again that that could be one of the reasons for your disc bulge so do some simple exercise keep yourself hydrated change the position uh, if you are in call I, I always advise people you anyway have the headset no stand for some time stand for five minutes then sit back so do something, change, keep changing the posture. That is the most important thing which you have to do to maintain the spine health. Okay. Thank you very much, doctor. Now I would request uh, Dr. Isha, our marketing and communications leader to uh, conduct the Q&A session, the questions from the audience. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Jamuna. Yeah. So uh, yes, we do have some questions from our uh, audience. So uh, one of the questions that we just received from our audience is a person, he has just undergone a distal femur operation uh, five months ago, but he still cannot bend his leg. His range of motion is only 50 degrees. So what should he do, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shiva? Over to you. Yeah. Am I audible now? <clears throat> yes, you are. Yeah. So the gentleman had a distal femur fracture surgery done five months back, right? Yes. 
I think it would be prudent for me to uh, to advise him to visit the doctor because generally, because if we don't know the details of the surgery and what were the circumstances which led to the fracture fixation and uh, whether it was a single plate was done or a double plate was done, what were the complications? Was it an open injury? Was it a closed uh, fracture? So all these are all like uh, multiple uh, factors which determine the movement and the fracture recovery and his rehabilitation also. Yeah, five months is a good amount of time. So I would request uh, uh, him to visit the orthopedic surgeon at the earliest and he should be uh, taking more serious uh, about his rehab also. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Doctor. Tell, uh, like, you know, why is he not getting any pending at, his, in, yeah, at this point of time without looking at him and his x rays and all the patient's history? You know? Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the answer. I think so. He must have got some answer regarding what he was uh, looking forward to. We do have another question here. Uh, yeah. Many people have this belief that artificial, uh, you know, joints, knee or hip implants in the body can cause diseases like cancer, heart problems, as well as kidney diseases. So is it true uh, that uh, our immune system is compromised post such uh, surgeries? No. See, uh... This uh, having implants in the body is not a new thing. So as for uh, not only in orthopedic surgery, but uh, before also we used to have a lot, lot of prosthesis have been used in different departments of the surgery. So they are very safe. I don't say that these are the uh, implants which make you weak immunologically or the, that, is a one, that is a reason for your development of your some cancer symptoms or cancer. I don't think so. And it is not true. So those are very safe implants. And uh, the most of the patients, you know, the results are very good. They are, they are, they're very happy and they're able to go take it back to their normal life. Most of the people are able to do, to do their day-to-day -day activities pain-free. So I think uh, nothing of that sort. See, one thing we should understand that if all something would have been of to that scale, so the things would not have been come so far. You know? So a lot of people are using it. So so many surgeries are being all over the all over the world, and so many happy patients you see and we also see. So I think they are very safe. Thank you so much, doctor. I think so. That was a really big uh, myth that was uh, around all these implants. Although I do uh, have. A Possibility that we can get a metal poisoning uh, from such implants. It is very, 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 very rare. So they are very stable ones. So generally, cobalt chrome is used and the titanium is used for the, all the fracture fixation and also in the joint replacements. Are both are body friendly, you can say. They are bone friendly. We don't develop the uh, what you call so called. Uh, poisoning as such. Yes, we do have some kind of a local reactions. We call it as metallosis. Sometimes very few patients, develop, very, 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 very few patients do develop. So I don't say that like we don't have any cases. Yes, we do have some cases, but most of the population is uh, like very happy with the implants. Very few people will have those complications. And it's not metal poisoning, it's a local reaction to the metal. Okay, okay. So, so thanks. Thanks for that answer, Dr. Shiva. Uh, one more question uh, that uh, we do have around this is, uh, do calcium supplements improve the overall bone health? And, you know, if nowadays people are into this trend of taking more and more calcium supplements that will help their joint health, it will help, you know, understanding their joint, uh, uh, it will better their joint health. So, does that lead to any kind of organ damage? See, anything taken for our body, anything taken uh, more than what is recommended is not good. That is for sure. So let it be the sunlight, let it be calcium, or for that matter, any a substance which is taken inside the body. Everything has got its own measure, time. So all these things are very important. So I don't recommend them to take, uh, uh, I do recommend them 
to take this calcium supplement judiciously. As far as bone health is concerned, it's a multifactorial. So it is age related, sometimes gender related, and uh, not only the calcium, but also the vitamin D and regular exercise and axial pressure on the bone. So when you have some pressure or when you do some work or when you work on the bone, then only the, the available calcium will be deposited in the bone. So no matter how much ever the calcium you are eating, if at all you are not using your body and there is no stress on the bone, none of the calcium goes to the body for deposition. On the contrary, a person lying down on the bed, it will go for it will go for disuse osteoporosis. So what is it like? Why we call it as disuse osteoporosis? So the, the, the term is coined just because like people will be debilitated, maybe cancer patients, maybe long fracture treatment patients. If at all they are not undergoing the physiotherapy and rehabilitation and then joint movements will become very stiff and bones also will become weak. That we call it as disuse osteoporosis. So for a bone health, what we should be looking at is to have a proper balanced diet. It's not only calcium, it's a lot of things. And a good sunlight and a moderate some amount of physical work will state and which will um, take care of your bone health. So that is so that so it is a like uh, complete thing which we, we need to look at. Yeah, taking calcium uh, tablets more than what is recommended is not healthy. Yet it may lead to stones. Yes, it is true. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. I think so. That is one of the major, uh, you know, myth and uh, thing misuse that is happening in terms of supplementation. And thanks for that, that uh, you know, uh, insightful answer. Uh, I, I'll wrap this uh, this question, Q and A session with one question for Dr. Hima. Uh, you you did mention regarding you know prolonged sitting can lead to issues, and we do see you know there's a lot of percentage of people who are into the corporate sector going to the office. And they do have this neck pain, stiffness, body ache happening because of, you know, prolonged sitting or maybe, you know, bad posture. Are there any tips other than that, what you mentioned that can help them, in, you know, uh, getting this issue uh, resolved or at least, you know, uh, getting it better? Yeah, okay. Uh, as I told you, uh, taking break every one hour is a must. Uh, everybody should make it a habit. And drinking water, everybody should make it a habit. Other than that, if people say, um, uh, maybe in the office, we are not able to do much, at least a regular physical activity of uh, 30 minutes a day, anything, simple walking, cycling, yoga, swimming, anything, any kind of physical activity, uh, 40 minutes to one hour a day, or at least 30 minutes to start with is, is very good. Uh, other than that, um, if um, anybody can get something where they can stand and work, it will be super useful. Uh, every one hour, uh, every one hour in the nine hours or ten hours of job, if, if any person can stand and work, if they have standing and sitting kind of arrangement, that will be super good. As I told you, simple exercises like neck movements. They can do uh, in the office itself if they are not able to take breaks, if they are not able to get out of the chair, go around the floor or go get some water uh, every one hour once. Then simple leg movements as I told you can do, uh, shoulder movements they can do, hand and the wrist movements definitely they have to do because this um, everybody will neglect. They neglect that um, uh, after 10 years of uh, working in the IT industry, suddenly one lady will come to the physiotherapy clinic complaining of pain in the thumb. They don't know that because uh, they don't know why it has come after 10 years. They say, I have been working for 10 years. I never had this issue. Only now I have this issue. I'm not able to type. I want a break, but uh, I'm not getting the leave. Uh, it is all because continuously they will be sitting in front of the keyboard and typing. So these are all cumulative trauma disorders. They will accumulate for a longer time and one day they will have the problem. So for that not to happen, uh, regular simple uh, hand and finger or wrist exercises are essential. And simple back stretches in the chair itself, they can twist around, they can uh, arch their back. 
they can try to touch their toes and get up that also will help to stretch the back muscles and as i told you uh, do some simple foot up and down exercises rotate your foot when you are sitting in a chair and uh, uh, do any kind of activity anything whichever you can sit and do you please do so make it a habit uh, definitely this will make a lot of difference uh, if anybody are facing issues other than that if uh, though the patient is though the person is doing all this taking frequent breaks drinking lots of water doing some simple physical activity and simple office exercise still if they have any concern with the low back pain or neck pain that is the time definitely they have to see an orthopedician if required they have to take the physiotherapy treatment also for a week or 10 days a proper uh, program for them where specific exercises which physiotherapist will teach them which they can continue at home uh, mostly the problem will be resolved if they are doing the um, following the exercises the instructions what is it this gave and doing the these exercises regularly it will be resolved in one or two months so that should be fine thank you dr hima uh, uh, this concludes our q and a session now over to you dr jamuna yeah thanks dr isha and neha for coordinating uh thank you very much dr shiva reddy and dr himo bindu for your valuable time and advice so and for <laughs> yeah and for making our audience understand about how to manage health after undergoing any kind of ortho surgeries i am sure today's viewers gained good knowledge about bone health and ortho care management and also they will understand that regular exercise and nutrition rich diet plays a very important role in maintaining good bone health and also viewers to avoid the benefits of our care plans and diet plans along with our care coordination services please download cure book app from play store we have introduced post surgery especially post ortho surgery care plans and diet plans in cure book app uh, for those patients who have undergone knee hip shoulder replacement surgeries and also uh, other kind of regular ortho surgeries Uh, with the uh, ad, uh, advice from your doctors especially the orthopedicians and the physiotherapists please uh, uh, subscribe to our plans and we will be very happy to serve you and your healthcare needs kindly contact us for subscriptions and any queries thank you all for joining today's session take care bye thank you all thank you so much kirati thank, thank you bye bye good night sorry good evening thank you so much <laughs> Thank you, Thank doctor. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. All Thank you, doctor. It's our pleasure. Yeah.